A CNC machine has two superpowers. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to unlock them and get the most out of our CNC machines. Prepare to witness a marvel of technology where the two superpowers of a CNC machine collide. Efficiency and personalization. Just as the Flash dashes through time effortlessly and Spider-Man weaves intricate webs, this CNC superhero swiftly creates projects with unparalleled speed and adds a personal touch that rivals the cosmic abilities of Captain Marvel. <laughs> Maybe that was a little much. Was it? You may or may not know this, but the features available in your CAD CAM software are crucial to unlocking your CNC's full potential. If you can't design or set up a project in a certain way in your CAD CAM software, then the, the software can't generate the G-code for your machine to read and use. I prefer to use Vectrix software for these exact reasons. They're constantly adding new features and new ways to be more efficient, to make the process more enjoyable, and to lock the, unlock the true power of your CNC machine. So let's get into superpower number one, efficiency. Tip number one, design for the fewest tools and tool changes possible. The fewer stops and starts you have, the more efficient you will be. When I'm designing and setting up my tool paths, I'm constantly thinking, can I do this with less? How can I make this more efficient? And can I reduce the number of tool changes? A really good tool to use is the merge toolpath function in Vectric. What this does is it groups all of your tool paths using the same tool and creates it into one toolpath. This can save you a ton of time with rapids, unnecessary movement from toolpath to toolpath. If you're batching out a lot of one thing, if you had your toolpath set up, you know, like you typically would, one by one, what the machine will do is it'll go and it'll do each toolpath individually going to each part. If you merge those toolpaths, it'll do all toolpaths on one single part before it moves to the next one all tool paths of the same tool size. And that saves a ton of time from going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It does one, does the next, does the next. Can save you a lot of time that way. Efficiency tip number two is nesting. So what nesting does is it arranges all of your vectors, all of your parts that you're gonna cut out, and it maximizes the, your stock raw material. So rather than having vectors kind of laid out, you can do it manually, right? And get them close together. But the software can do this just by selecting all the vectors, hitting this button, and it'll arrange them in the most efficient way possible. Efficiency tip number three is the vector selector order. So you know how sometimes you're running a job on a CNC and you ask, why is it cutting it in that order? That doesn't make any sense. That's not the most efficient way. Well, a way to control this is to use the vector selector order. And what this does is you will select this feature and then you'll click on the vectors in the order that you want your machine to machine them. And then rather than going randomly how the machine sees fit, the G code is generated and how it sees fit, um, you can control the order in which your parts are machined. Efficiency tip number four is setting up your project in layers. All the objects assigned to a specific layer can be simultaneously selected, labeled, colored, or temporarily hidden, or even locked using the layer management tools. You can basically assign them to a layer and treat them differently than the other layers. This not only keeps your project more organized and thus more efficient, but it also unlocks the ability to do a few more things that we're gonna talk about here in a second. So next let's talk about personalization. The number one way to make a product more sellable and worth more money is to personalize it, to customize it in a way that it's for a specific person uh, where it becomes one of a kind. Now this is one of the cool things about CNC, whether it's a CNC laser or CNC router, is the ease and the ability to add any kind of customization, any kind of personalization uh, that you see fit or your customer wants. And not only doing it once, but you can actually repeat that process over and over and over again. And there's some really cool features in Vectric where they make that personalization of objects really easy and really repeatable. You may be thinking, why are you talking about efficiency and personalization in the same video? In my mind, they go hand in hand. And especially in Vectric, they have tools that make it possible to personalize efficiently. Tip number five is a personalization tip, and that is to create project templates. 
Project templates can be a great way to create a template that you start from for a certain pro product. For example, let's say if you're making a sign, it can house information like geometry size and shapes, but also the stock size and kind of think about it's, it's the foundation of your project. So if you're making a product over and over and over again and you have these different foundations, you can start there each time rather than having those vectors like in a file and having to import them every time and having to set the stock size, like you can skip all that, do it once and start from that point. One of the really cool things is it's not possible to overwrite a template file. Meaning, you know how, let's say Microsoft Word or yeah, what's well, Microsoft Word when you are, when you have a, a, a paper, let's just say you have a, a paragraph. If you edit that paragraph and you hit save, you can't go back, well, you can't easily go back to that previous file, that previous paragraph. So you overwrite that file. So with template files, you create them and you save them. And if you save any changes, it'll save as a new template file. That is a template that you start with every single time, no matter the changes you make to it, it'll still, that, that original template file will still be in its original form. Tip number six on personalization is the automatic vector selector. Say that five times fast. Automatic vector selector, automatic vector selector, automatic vector selector, automatic vector selector. Vector lector, yeah, it's hard. This tool allows you to easily select vectors which meet a set criteria. The most common way to use the vector selector is to select all the vectors on a given layer. So the difference here is rather than manually selecting vectors to set up toolpaths, you are using, it's right next to it, there's manual, you can see down here in the bottom, manual and then selector. You click selector and you're basically creating parameters and filters for the software to select vectors, uh, to find all the vectors with those parameters and apply the toolpaths to them. So what you can do is you can set all your objects on one layer with one specific toolpath, and then using the vector selector, you can put that parameter in and it'll automatically apply those rules to that layer. Why is that cool? Because you can combine all these things that I've been talking about to get to this point. Let's take a sign project, for example. You could create a template of a common product that you make. Um, so you could start with that template and then you could have your different objects, uh, different aspects of your sign in different layers. And then you can use the um, vector selector and put in those parameters. Hey, I want these toolpaths on these uh, layers and it'll automatically um, recalculate them. That's really cool because you can set up these specific layers to be editable, whether it's a name or a date or a saying or um, different like grayscale images that are engraved or something along those lines, but you can have editable layers. And then when you go in and edit those layers, everything else is staying the same. You're just editing that layer. That uh, vector selector will automatically apply those tool paths to those layers. Bada bing, bada boom. You literally in a matter of minutes can customize a sign and make it personal to somebody extremely efficiently. So there are some of my favorite tools to unlock the true potential of your CNC machine. By no means is this an exhaustive list. These are just my favorite features in the software that I use. So my goal with this video was to bring these features to light and just make you aware of them, that these are possibilities. If you wanna dive deeper and have step-by-step -step tutorials, Vectric has fantastic tutorials on their website. I'll leave all that information in the description below so you can check them out. If you got a lot of value out of this video, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. If you wanna learn more about my CNC business, click this video right here. I will see you in that video. Thanks so much for watching.